Wow, uh, it's so uh, divine to have a warm, cozy cave where you can build a fire inside when the weather <laughs> creaks out outside. Whoa. Uh, well, look, I uh, continue uh, narrating as me, female, goddess earthy, disguised who, as who? <laughs> yeah, that guy, huh? Earthman? Mm -hmm. I want to talk to you about his golden age in the late 1960s. Well, he lived in a, this remote cave. He had to walk to Lindo's for provisions, for food, and uh, human camaraderie. But only every other morning. Uh, on the beach below, he occasionally sawed on a, a few scavenged wooden planks and firewood, dragged all that up the cliffs uh, for apropos uh, uh, caveman furniture. <laughs> yeah, shelving. Mm. Firewood. Yeah. He hid his handsaw and a little tape measure on the beach. Mm. You could custom cut, <laughs> you know, a piece of wood there my drag up you know, dead wood. Earthman tough, toughened, toned by his prehistoric cave lifestyle. Mm. When this is when he experiences peak physical prowess. Early twenties. Mm -hmm. Unique cave life. Perfect breathing ground. Become a tan, muscular, liberated, independent, uh, world revolutionary. Revolutionary for the earth people. And then, <coughs> the context, a missed free love. 1960s style, yeah. Horny hippie trick. Drifting towards uh, India, through the Greek islands, adored Earth man and his lifestyle. Mm -hmm. This is how Earth man hooked up with Rainbow, his future traveling partner, to India and Southeast Asia. The star of his memoir, Earth Freaks, The Coming of the Earth People. All about Rainbow. Yeah, and sometimes these hippie chicks express their adoration uh, and lust by mm -hmm. fucking him in the little comfy rooms in the village. Well, look, one hassle about cave life, uh, inhaling the constant dust from the cave floor. Uh, you kick up a lot of it. Can't help it. And so to create a dust free foundation within the womb chamber, um, Earthman patiently uh, constructed a stone floor. One large stone at a time, a day almost. Very carefully picked a stone that had a very flat edge that would be a good floor surface. Um, in this way he made a stone floor in one third of the womb chamber. It's still here. Um, but <laughs> falling apart, you know, a feral ghost, huh? stomping over everything for 30 years. Oh, yeah. Endless toil. Kind of like um, Milarepa, the Tibetan yogi. He was put through uh, these grueling uh, ordeals by his guru to roll stones around. And but Earthman's doing it for fun. Uh, yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. He'd have to roll the stones. <laughs> he couldn't lift them. He's so huge. Uh, uh, so he didn't crush his fingers. Uh, and roll them end over end all the way down through the cave entrance. And uh, no mortar. He made a beautiful stone floor. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, there's a point here. <clears throat> I'm trying to make. Uh, living as a caveman, Earthman had time to focus on. Whatever. Sawing a bean? Mm -hmm. 
leveling a stone floor, making love with luscious Cleopatra in the village. Yeah. Yeah, for months at a time. Yeah, uh, reading spiritual books, absorbing wisdom, Eastern wisdom, focusing on his big cosmic self, how that fits in reality to humanity, with humanity. But let's go deeper. You know what? I want to go into the archives chamber. Archives chamber? Yes. Well, we've got... From the entrance, skinny through to the womb chamber, then through the vagina veil into the inner chamber, and in the back of the inner chamber, the archive chamber, the final chamber. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, it's tight, the archive chamber. Um, I mean, Earthman had lived in the cave for months before he discovered this. Micro Grotto. Mm. Mm -hmm. Behind and above a curtain of moist stalactite. Uh, out of sight. Mm. Mm. The hidden entrance to the archives is higher than the human eye. Of a standing human. Um, the secret. Overhead archives, the deepest recess in the cavern. Mm. Not for the claustrophobic. Mm. Mm -mm. Archives tight. About about a half meter high. Is <laughs> this the size of a human coffin? And uh, where Earthman hid his two kilograms of hashish that he uh, smuggled from Afghanistan to the cave. <sighs> and across Turkey. Ever see the film Midnight Express? Western smuggler, hashish, turkey, oops, imprisoned. Yeah, Earthman was lucky that he made it. Mm. Yeah. Well, with his primo stash, he turned on the whole hippie scene in Lindo. Yeah. Um, on a compassionate basis. Mm -hmm. As cash flow required, uh, Earthman would take the passenger steamer, ferry, uh, to Athens to sell hashish to expatriate European artists, his friends there. <laughs> and then he would transform this energy from selling the hashish into cave uh, uh, energy. Provisions, potatoes, onions, Onions. Oh yeah, to broil whole onions uh, in the red embers after the cave fire quieted down a little bit. When Earthman was young, oh skinny, you could count his ribs. Oh yeah, young man. Uh huh. He just pulled himself up over the curtain of stalactites into the archives chamber, size of a coffin. Parched archives, dry, so dry, bone dry. Uh, ooh, macabre. Uh, little micro. Skeletons of lizards, uh, they seem to go up there to die. And it's just like a graveyard of little lizard skeletons. Uh, you know what? He should have hidden his uh, memoir here. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we got the whole story. Cleopatra and him off to Afghanistan on a wild. Kama Sutra along the roadside. Never, no, nobody was looking. They were just. <laughs> they love each other so much. Yeah. Oh, ultimate hiding place, this archive. Yeah, Earthman stashed a hundred dollar bill here. Uh, and they came back two years later, it was still there. Mm -hmm. After being in India, Southeast Asia, uh, archives, uh, oriental talismans hidden up here, Greek coins oxidized green <laughs> up here. That's a green drachmas. <laughs> 
But what will men, uh, mementos remain like right now in the archives after 30 years? <sighs> We've completely forgotten. Yeah. And Earthman's slacker memory runners? Clueless. Mm. Archives change. Let's explore up there.